pattern problems are a particular favorite for algebra students to hate, and they make for really excellent brain teasers. So let's take a look at this pattern problem. So in this particular pattern problem, we're given figures one, two, and three, and then we're asked to find the pattern in order to know how many toothpicks would be involved in making figure 10. So the first thing I like to do in pattern problems is I like to make a table of values and then use that to see if I can find the pattern. So if my X value is my figure number, so I've got figure one, figure two, figure three, dot, dot, dot. Now I can start to input my Y value as the number of toothpicks involved. So for figure one, one, two, three, four, four toothpicks. And for figure two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And in figure three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. And now what I would do is I would start to look for some patterns to get from four to 13. Well, like not really gonna do that through multiplication. So let me check through addition and that would be adding nine. And then to get from 13 to 26, that would be adding 13. So now what I might do is write out figure four and calculate that and see if I'm seeing any pattern. And so if I draw figure four and I count up all my toothpicks, I get 43 toothpicks and that's a leap of 17. And now if I see from four to 13, that's a leap of four. And from 13 to 17, that's also a leap of four. And there's my pattern right there. So when I do not find an addition pattern or a multiplication pattern in my first set of leaps, but I do find that my changes between numbers are going up by a constant, then that means that I have a quadratic relation, right? After I recognize that this was not going up by multiplication, or going up by a constant additive, I realized that the change was constant and that's what indicates a quadratic equation. And a quadratic can be written in the following way, ax squared plus bx plus c. So now I have to figure out how to find my a, my b, and my c. We now know that the difference between all of our differences is this constant of four. So if I go to my zeroth term of x, which will be my c, right? When x is zero, these terms go away and I get my c. I know that the difference between my differences is four. So that means my difference will be five. And so four, having gone down by five, would leave me at negative one. So I know now my c is minus one. And now I have an equation with only two variables, a and b, in order to create my equation. x is going to stay x. And I have a whole bunch of points. So now I can transition to do simultaneous equations to find the a and the b. So I would go like this. I would start with my equation where x is 1 and y is 4. And I would take this and do it like this where I'm substituting one in for X and four in for Y. And then I would simplify things to find out that A plus B equals five by adding my one to both sides. And then all of these ones are just ones. Okay, now I would do it again with my X equals two. So 13 equals A times two squared plus B times two minus one. And I would simplify that equation to 14 equals 4a plus 2b. And maybe I would divide that whole equation by 2 to find now. 
I have a B in my top equation and a B in my bottom equation. So I'm going to continue solving by subtracting one equation from the other. I'm actually going to rewrite them so that my subtraction winds up with positive numbers. So I've just stacked them in the other direction. And now I'm going to subtract 7 minus 5 is 2, 2a minus a is a, b minus b is 0. And so I found my next variable, a equals 2. And now I'll go ahead and substitute 2 into one of these two equations. 5 equals 2 plus b. That means b equals 3. And now I have my full quadratic equation. y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. My problem wanted to know figure 10, so I'm going to throw 10 into that equation. And so that gives me y equals 2 times 10 squared plus 3 times 10 minus 1. So I would need 229 toothpicks to comprise figure 10. All right, have at it. Let me know what ways you got for how to find the number of toothpicks in figure 10. And then meanwhile, take a quick look at how I realized that this was a quadratic by looking at the differences between the differences and finding a constant, right? After I recognized that this was not going up by multiplication or going up by a constant additive, I realized that the change was constant and that's what indicates a quadratic equation. All right, stay tuned for additional pattern problems. Throw one in the comments if you'd like me to take one on. Consider subscribing to my channel so you know when I put out a new video. And as always, keep on mathing.